I love my friend so much, like I want her to experience pleasure. We've met a lot of women, sexually liberated women that have talked about, you know, like men just serving them sexually and them not giving anything back. I felt ignited to like share in this other type of sisterhood with her. And so we we knew this this gentleman in Costa Rica. And we're like, hey, listen, we've been around a lot of bitches and we really need you to just like- Cater to us. And he was like, okay. I was like, Do we, we don't need a lot of talking. Just please us. Like that's that's the only, that's your only job. And and people always ask like, so did you guys sleep with each other? Like did you and Jamil? And the answer is no, we didn't. It was really about like, he pleases her, I, he pleases me. I encourage him to keep, go harder, like do better. And at one point, Jamila was manifesting like, I don't know, a lot of money. Yeah, I was like sitting on his face. And in my mind, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. We're gonna get $4 million. <laughs> and then I came on his face and it was like, yeah, it was really, I think she was like pushing me down on his face more. So you were assisting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like maybe like a shoulder oh, here. That's, okay, so this is where the line, fuck my friend better comes in. Mm -hmm. We made it. Yes, mm -hmm. made it. so that's where the line, fuck my friend better, yes. I, I And I, I, I really meant it. I was like, do it, please her. What's the greatest joy of getting to share your whole self with another woman when you get to call a best friend? Lovers and friends. Lovers and friends. I'm gonna take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I said, Lovers and friends. Uh, I'm gonna hold you down, down to the end. I said, that is Erica and Mila, the guests on this podcast, sharing just part of what I will go on record and say as the best story. I have ever heard before on Lovers and Friends, and you get to hear all of it too. But before we really get started, I really wanna tell you about the sponsor of this episode, StoryWorth. Actually, can we play a royalty-free version of Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas? I mean, close enough. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the best at giving gifts, but this year, I wanna change that. I want to give gifts to people that feel intentional, that are meaningful, things that will last for years to come. And that is why specifically for mom and dad, I am giving them the gift of StoryWorth. And if you don't know, StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories for years and years to come. So here is how it works. Every single week, StoryWorth's gonna email your relative or friend a thought-provoking question of your choice from this vast pool of possible questions. And each of these unique questions is going to inspire a story out of the respondent. Then, after one year, StoryWorth will compile all of your loved one's stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. Hence why I wanna give this to my mom and dad. It is genuinely a genius gift and it gets even better. Go to storyworth.com slash lovers to get $10 off of your first purchase with StoryWorth. Again, that is storyworth.com slash lovers for $10 off. Together today, whenever today is for you, we are going to be touching on the importance of platonic intimacy and how through bearing it all with your bestie, the real, the rare, the repulsive, and the riveting could actually make for a natural progression to experiencing and enhancing each other sexually in a very explicit and also very platonic way. Now, this episode is about how our friends can play an incredibly enriching role in our sex lives and moreover, in other creative facets of our being. So, with all that being said very quickly, let's go do that. If Oprah and Howard Stern had a baby, it would be good mom's bad choices. Meet Erica and Mila, two uncensored, hella real and outspoken sex and cannabis positive moms who are redefining what modern motherhood looks like. You might remember Erica Mila from one of our most popular Lovers and Friends episodes. This baby is killing our sex life. Yes, there are definitely um, positives to being a single parent. Um, but then there's also, you know, dating can be tricky, you know, even like... He, even having sex, like, because have I had sex with my daughter at the house with, you know, with someone that I'm seeing? Absolutely. Like, put her in the room, be quiet. But, like, I think one of my insecurities as a single mom 
with my with my own child has been that she's really never seen me in love. She's really never seen mommy like being nurtured and fulfilled by a romantic partner in that way. Her her friends have, you know, married parents at home. She goes and hangs out with them at their house. Actually yesterday <laughs> yesterday one of the little girls was like, "Why does Irie's dad not live at your house? That's weird." And like these are conversations that I have to like, you know, combat with like, "Well, Irie has two houses." No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That kind of raw, real, relatable, and hilarious honesty is precisely why their podcast is ranked in the top 1% of podcasts in the world. And also why they're back here on this podcast once again. Hey, friends. Hi. Hi. Ooh, that was a nice hi. Hi. Hey. Actually, I was going to ask you that question. What's your guys' uh, best friend song? Oh my god! Well, currently it's "Fuck Nigga Free." Uh, that's true. We just came off tour, and so that was our tour like intro song. So that still currently like that really gets us going. And nasty which is gal. not applicable to your lives at all, because no. as you discussed, you guys are both boot up right but now. But we're "Fuck Nigga Free" though. I'm T A K E N D again. <laughs> <laughs> still hanging out the window with, with my ratchet ass, ass friends. friends. That's true. <laughs> So, yeah, it still applies. <laughs> uh, we're here to talk about the weave that friendship and intimacy have together. And I feel like I know you guys have told me the story before of how you became friends. But was the precipice for your friendship sex? Can we just pause to acknowledge that precipice was used incorrectly by myself? Now, I thought it was a synonym for basis or foundation. But when I looked it up, it's kind of the exact opposite. Precipice is a very steep rock face or cliff, especially a tall one. So somebody please message me and help me out. Is there a word that sounds like precipice that I was trying to grab that I couldn't grab or am I just grasping at thin air? <laughs> Anyways, while we are helping each other out, I really wanna share something with you that could really change lives. So let's talk about life insurance. If you are listening to this Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance Sponsorship ad, there is a very good chance that you are alive. And if you're not, well, this might not be of interest to you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Life insurance, I'm gonna live forever. Death is what happens to other people. Well, for the sake of an argument, let's assume that you're wrong and that someday you won't be listening to podcasts anymore. I know, it's not easy to talk about, so I'll do the talking for us. If you are 50 plus and alive or 50 to 75 in New York, you can apply for Gerber Life Guaranteed Life Insurance with guaranteed acceptance regardless of your health. And since this life insurance is guaranteed, you don't have to get a medical exam. In fact, you don't even have to fill out a health questionnaire. For a free quote, just visit GerberLifeFamily.com. Then when you stop, I mean, if you stop listening to podcasts, your family can use the insurance money to cover your final expenses or anything else. Your kids already inherited your ears, your allergies, your questionable singing voice. Do not make them inherit your final expenses tab too. See website for terms and restrictions. Now let's get back to Erica and Mila and hear how their friendship began. We had been, we had, we had been mommy friends ish had maybe maybe a few mommy dates she invited me to her daughter's birthday and i finally i'd recently become single and i started dating and so i was really excited to tell her that i had started dating a married couple and I, I i didn't feel like i could i didn't feel safe enough to really share it with my other friends because i didn't think that they well a they wouldn't understand and or i didn't think they would i didn't even give them the benefit of the doubt but i didn't think they would understand and I, honestly i was still working through a little bit of shame in in, in my choice in doing that um, being a mom, having a threesome, and then going home and tucking my kid in at the end of the night after my date. Like, I was like, is this, am I crazy for doing this? Like, I'm getting a lot of pleasure out of this, but is this, is there something wrong with me? And I knew Mila just from the vibe, and you know, I'm pretty intuitive. I could just tell just off of our, our few hangouts, like, she was with the shits. <laughs> and so I was like, Did she have a story that she told you that you were like, oh, this gives me permission? No. I ask her this all the time. Like, no. what made you know I was with the shits? Because, like, what to go there specifically, like, I'm going to tell this person. I think, okay, I I, I think because in the beginning of our, our like, I guess, in, Inception love story started on Instagram where I saw her posting pictures of her, like, at a hotel pool party with her newborn. And she was, like, in a bikini living her life. So I was like. And that was enough for you? That She was with You're the like, shits. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I don't know. She's button? still drinking. Like, <laughs> she's drinking. There's a newborn on her hip. She's at a Hollywood pool party. Like, there's more to this bitch than the eye can see. 
And I just, and, and even when I, the few times we hung out, I felt really safe and comfortable with her. Like we've always been able to have really just, just flow. So, you know, and I was at that point too, like obviously like taking this, doing this, doing this new thing and exploring my sexuality in this way. I did, I felt this new burst of empowerment where I was kind of like, I was ready to like just kind of change and tell somebody. So I felt it was like a, it was like a culmination of a bunch of different things that made me feel excited to share this with her. I also think that, you know, I think it's hard for women or people in general to make adult friends, new friends as, an, as adults. And I think one of the things about Erica and I, when we became close and we started our podcast, we had just gotten out of relationships that we had kind of forgotten about who we were. And I think that with the, as a combination of also meeting someone that I didn't really know this bitch at all. And she didn't really know me. It was like, A, I'm going to find myself no matter what the fuck. I'm never going to lose it again. And also, what do I have to lose? This bitch doesn't really know me that well anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just like, I'm going to be like extremely honest. And what, what's the worst that can happen? So for you, this was the first friendship. Well, not the first, but she was somebody who you could trust in a way to share a new part of yourself that you weren't sure you could trust other people. Mm -hmm. For you, was that part of your culture or did you create that? No, that... That that was my that is my culture. I am the person that people tell things, and I'm like, why did she just tell me this? She doesn't even know me. I do like I have that energy. I'm like I'm pretty non judgmental, and I think that that comes through. Obviously, yeah. I mean, I think me telling her that I was exploring my sexuality was kind of the weave in our the beginning, the first stitch in our real togetherness as friends. Because uh, aren't like not all girls are down for that type of like share. You know, there's some friends. That, that will judge you, you know? So you kind of know, you know who to bring what story to who. Mm -hmm. So that was like, perfect. <laughs> it's different that too, because like my probably best friend right now is my sister. I mean, she has always been my best friend, but like in the way that like, that's my closest girlfriend, but we don't have that relationship where it feels natural and not for judgment reason, just because for some reason there's like an ache factor there. Maybe because it's your sister? Yeah. Do you, do you, so you don't talk about sex with your sister? I mean, I'll try. I'll give it a go. I was gonna say, you, Shan, you don't talk It'll to It'll become she like, doesn't, she doesn't it becomes it. like a joke. It's not like an actual thing where we're trading stories and learning from each other. And she's like, shut up. Don't say anything else. I'm gonna actually play another one of her videos for you that I watch. I liked Why a lot. Why would you play a porn video for me? Like, it just well, sounds weird. Why are you, pl you've already recommended and I'll do it in my own time. Okay, I'm not going to <laughs> sit here. <laughs> I would gravitate towards like more like lesbian stuff because- I do too. That would, that to me is like- Are we having a moment? <laughs> having a moment. Don't touch me. Okay. <laughs> but I would imagine that you guys have the friendship where your friendship makes sex better. I think so, yeah. We have definitely share sex tips with each other. Like, hey, you should try this or have you tried this? Or that did not work, bitch. So I think for sure having a, a friend where I can be really honest about my sex wins and losses is really helpful in my sex life. And also, you know, her sharing hers also inspires me to take more risks sexually and vice versa. So I think, yeah, it's important, at least for me, to be able to have be able to share in that way. There's a book that I love that talks about how you're never just having sex with you and the person that you're with. There's always an audience of your friends, your family, the movie that you watch. Like there's so many expectations and perceptions that come into the bedroom. But your friend is kind of like the delightful add on there because it's not the shame, not the judgment, not the expectation, not that you're supposed to look this way. But instead, like, you know, your friend would be cheering you on and celebrating you for who you are in that moment. You would hope. That's the hope, I think. I think some friends judge for sure. A lot of friends judge. I think also if you're not comfortable with your own sexuality, mm. someone else talking about it or being comfortable with their sexuality is going to trigger you. I've had a lot of friendships like that. It's probably always really refreshed to get an Erica. <laughs> <laughs> I asked this question recently on a podcast of uh, to my audience. What percentage of your relationships do you share with your friends? Like how honest are you? And most people were like 20%, 30%, 40%. For you guys, what's the percentage that you share with each other? Hundred percent, ninety nine point nine. I feel like even if we want to be like, I think we might, we might try to hold stuff, and then eventually we're like, "Bitch, I have to tell you, I haven't been telling you the truth." <laughs> like this nigga's really annoying, or like the sex really isn't that good, girl, or like I thought it was good, but I was three weeks later, day. it's not that great. So yeah, I think I think because we do this for a living and we talk so fucking much for a living, like we. We don't know how to, we don't have a lot of boundaries, which <laughs> is good for us. I don't know if it's good for anyone else in our life, um, 
but it's the reason why I think we've been able to grow in our friendship, in our business, in our womanhood, in the way that we have, because we've been able to really show up authentically as ourselves and say all the things and admit all the things, even as far as like saying, hey, yesterday I felt really jealous of like, I felt jealous. I felt like I was comparing myself to you, like, which I think is something that like most friends would never admit to a friend. I think that's actually so much so true where we're like real friendships spawn from those real bonding moments because I think as women, we're often battling or preparing ourselves for battle for criticism and judgment from other women. So when you do those things that you're like, I know that this is going to be an igniter for a lot of women to like shake their finger at me and you have somebody who's like, yes to you, that just creates a safe space automatically. I mean, that's the premise of our entire podcast. Oh, it was like a tornado after that. I was like, oh, this is okay. Oh, well, shit. Let's have some fun. Oh, like, oh, you smoke weed. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you're a mom. You smoke weed. Perfect. <laughs> you want to start a podcast? Perfect. Let's just talk about all this shit. I mean, I really think that that's really kind of, I don't want to say where my life started because obviously I had a life before this and, and it was fine. It was cool. But it really was like this where I started really giving myself permission to really be authentic and really not be afraid of like these parts of me that I had suppressed for a really long time or judged myself for or like, is that me? I don't know. Or even judged other women for. I mean, when I met when I saw Jamila on Instagram, I judged her like when I saw her at the pool party, I was like, whoa, like I was jealous. But also I was also like, should I could I, I can do this? So I was still working through parts of myself where I was still experiencing jealousy and hater haterisms um, while also wanting to partake. So when she when I told her the story, it really kind of gave me permission to be like, all right, well, bitch, I'm going all the way in then. And that's kind of the premise of good mom's bad choices. What does going all the way in mean? Like, how has that shown up in your relationship? Uh, I mean, for me at that time and still, I mean, not still, but at that time it was like, all right, well, I can date. I can I can go on many dates if I want. I can really explore as much as I want. I can have a one night stand if I want. I can date a married couple if I want. I can date five people at the same time if I want. Or I could, you know, be celibate if I want. And, and I did that too. Did your friendship give you that permission? I feel like it did. Yeah, because she we were both kind of going through the same thing at the same time. She was... She had just recently become single, so we were venturing into dating at the same time. As single moms, which I think for both of us, we kind of felt like was um, like the biggest scarlet letter of all time to be a single black mom, you know, is like, no. And instead we were just like, oh, you're, you're here too. And we were really just committed to not letting it be the end all be all and not letting it like take over, like this negative cognition take over our perceptions of ourselves. I think we both gave each other permission to really just kind of explore all the facets of what sex looked like for us now as as single parents with new part with new people um, and what sexuality looked like for us and um, what kind of rules and boundaries we want to have or not have anymore. It was kind of like like I said, it was a do over for me. And I mean, even as friends, we've explored, you know, pleasure with one another, not necessarily having sex with one another, but empowering each other sexually together with people like, hey, like, fuck my friend better. <laughs> and and for me, that's like so cool because like I, I love my friend so much, like I want her to experience pleasure. I, I am excited by the idea of my friend experiencing pleasure. Um, you got to expand on that script for me. In <laughs> what context would that phrase need to be applied? So <laughs> the story goes. <laughs> Once upon a time, a so, small town in Costa Rica. So me and Jamila, we do women's retreats in Costa Rica. And um, we, we, we do them, we usually do them back to back. And it's a lot of energy. It's a big energy exchange supporting th these women. And um, a being, lot of women. Being retreat leaders and shit. And so after we were done with our retreat, we stayed in Costa Rica for, I think, another like week, week. and a half or so. And we, we obviously hadn't had sex with anyone, you know, and I don't even know exactly how it happened. And there was definitely alcohol involved. I think but we're going out. And I was like, she's like, I think, I think we need a goddess experience. I'm like, I, we know someone who will give us a goddess experience. I love the fact you guys had the friendship where you would know what that really meant. You know, because I, I feel like a goddess about... experience for me would be like we're getting our nails done. <laughs> That's also a goddess yeah. experience. That is, I think. You I know, think we're like we, we should make so and so serve us. <laughs> you know, I think for sure throughout our podcasting 
you know, journey, we've met a lot of women, sexually liberated women that have talked about, you know, like men just serving them sexually and them not giving anything back. Um, and that's always been like appealing to me. I mean, not that, I mean, I've had that, I guess, privately in ways, but um, after sharing the, in this extreme sisterhood experience with my friend, I felt ignited to like share in this other type of sisterhood with her. And so we, we knew this, this gentleman in Costa Rica and, um, and we went out one night and I was, we, we did, we were like, we need to have a goddess experience. Like there's, there was really only like one good looking guy in the whole town. So we're like, not the whole town, kind of, no, not just the bar you were at. There's, there's, I mean, there's, a, few, town. there's a few, but, but there this was, one, we knew, but this one we knew this one would be game. And so I think we like kind of talked about it before and then we're like, okay, yeah, let's see what happens. How did you know you'd talk to him in town? No, we talked about it each to each other and like, huh, this might be, this might be a good idea. <laughs> been around so many bitches and like, yeah. And then of course we saw them in town because there's only like a hundred people there and we're like, Hey, listen, we've been talking and been around and a lot a of language barrier too. Is there no, 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 no. he's American. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just very, more exotic. <laughs> 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 Google voice translation. <laughs> very I do speak Spanish though. So we could have yes. happened. It could have happened either way. You in Spanish, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we're like, hey, listen, we've been around a lot of bitches, and we really need you to just like cater to us. <laughs> He's like, okay. I was like, do we, we don't need a lot of talking, just please us. Like that's that's the only that's your only job is what that's what needs to happen. And he was like, okay. And so he hopped in our car. <laughs> then, then on the way to the house, <laughs> Erica looked over and he was like, he was like, closed his eyes. She's like, like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, I'm mentally preparing. <laughs> Was he joking? No. no. <laughs> He's dead serious. He looked like he was meditating. I was like, yeah. are you okay? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had he done this before? I think he's had threesomes before, but not in the ways in which we positioned it to him, which was like, this is a goddess experience. And we, I said to him, we've, we've been, been, working, we've been really working really hard and we deserve to be spoiled and catered to. And he was like, got it. And so I would think he was like, okay, what are the ways? How can I cater to both of them equally? Like, I want to make sure that like, he took his job very seriously. And so, you know, we got back to the, the Airbnb and we sat there and then he was like, I'm going to take a shower. And it's so funny. The shower like happened to be right. in like there was a couch and then there was the bathroom and the shower was right there. And so he like undresses and we're just like sitting there like, oh, I'll look at this. this and is he starts fun. like. Like washing his body, and he's like six looking pack, at us, and he were looking at us, and, I was like, and we're like toasting, like yeah, we're the shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're like watching this man. It was like a movie. He was like bathing, we're fresh, like giggling a little he had bit, all this soap on his body and shit. Please don't hate me, but we have to pause here because there literally is not a better tea up than the beginning of this incredible story to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Manscaped. This holiday season, Manscaped has vowed to make sure his ornaments are shining bright and his tree is standing tall. With the power of their best-selling products like the Performance Package 4.0, which includes the Lawnmower 4.0, their all-new skin-safe electric trimmer, the Weed Whacker, their ear and nose hair trimmer, and the Crop Preserver, their anti-chafing ball deodorant, plus the Crop Reviver, the Ball Spray Toner, plus, plus magic mats, which are disposable shaving mats, which as somebody who lives with a man, I cannot begin to tell you how clutch these are because little hair is everywhere, just get under my skin. Anyhow, if you order the performance package now, you'll also get the Manscaped boxers and the Shed travel bag for free. And folks, that's not all. For 20% off, free shipping, and to let them know who sent you, go to manscaped.com slash lovers, that is manscaped.com slash lovers for the perfect gift for him, plus the gift for us that just keeps on giving. All right, now that I've helped you choose a gift for the fellas, let's get back to this goddess tale. He just walked out naked towards the couch, kissed her, then kissed me, and then we got it popping, and it was really great. It was really nice. And, and people always ask, like, so did you guys sleep with each other? Like, did you and Jamil? And the answer is no, we didn't. It was really about, like, he pleases her, I, he pleases me. I encourage him to keep, go harder, like, do better, and vice versa. And at one point, Jamila was manifesting, like, I don't know, a lot of money at one point. Yeah, like, I was, like, sitting on his face. And I was like, I don't know, I want $2 million. And I was like, Out no. loud? 
I, no, I think it was in my mind. And I was like, actually, four million, it's better. And she was like, I don't know what she was doing down there, but I was in my mind, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. We're going to get four million dollars. <laughs> and then I came on his face, and it was like, yeah, it was really, I think she was like pushing me down on his face more. So you were assisting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like maybe like a shoulder oh, that's, here. Okay, so this is where the line, fuck my friend better, comes in. Mm -hmm. We made it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's where the line, fuck my friend better, yes. I, I, and I, I, I really meant it. I was like, do it. I have two thoughts because I think with threesomes, what usually happens is the fear for women to indulge in them comes from the competition factor. Like I'm afraid to do it because I don't want to see my partner giving someone else more attention. I don't want to feel insecure. Your experience really flipped that on its head where I feel like insecurity would be the last thing on your mind. Mm. I'm mm -hmm. trying to get money. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to result in more money for sure. I, we just don't have that type of relationship. And again, I think it's safety, you know, and I think like being safe is about being able to be vulnerable. And like, when are you most vulnerable during s having sex? But I'm actually kind of wondering if, you know, because a lot of men might pitch to their partner, like, I want to have a threesome. But their vision of that might be the vision that would make someone feel insecure. But if that person was able to advocate and say, like, yes, you can give myself and a friend, my friend, a goddess experience. That's right. That might switch the perspective for him and for you. And so you don't feel I mean, everyone's, you know, comfort level is different. You know, I've been in a lot of three way situations where shit went wrong. And I was like, listen, bitch, I'm going to leave right now. But I think what did that look like? Me coaching a cu married couple through like tears. <laughs> Why? Naked. I, I think he was giving me head too good. And she was like, what's the last time you gave me head like that? And I was like, let's pause. Let's take a minute. Let's talk about this. She was crying and he was drunk. I was like, you're so beautiful. I'm like, I don't think that's what she wants to hear right now. I don't think that's what she's trying to hear. Let's talk about it. And, like holding her, holding her through it and like talking to her. <laughs> I don't know why these types of things happen to me. But, you know, there's like, I just think. Is a difference in a, a, your guy asking you, hey, I want a threesome and you and your friend conjuring to be like, hey, this is what I think we should do. And this is what it's going to look like. And then then us picking a guy and saying, hey, you, this is what we need you to do for us. You know, I think women feel so pressured to keep a man. And then that's where the competition comes in. And the guy picks the girl. And there's just all this like insecurity because you're like, why did you pick her? Why did you want to do this? Are you not satisfied with me? None of those questions were present for us because that wasn't a thing. Just changing your perspective really changes the experience. Well, the goal was not to please him. And I think like maybe changing that perception for couples is like the goal is not to please your partner. Like instead of going into a threesome, like, OK, yes, I'm going to like you're going to get pleased. I'm going to get pleased. Almost being selfish about it. Like I'm going to get pleased. And then my pleasure hopefully is a byproduct of your pleasure. And like maybe and then and then I'm happy. Instead of going into it like, okay, like, sh you, I want you to be happy. Is, is she is she the right one? Like, I don't really know. Am I getting, you know, it's just like all these different things. And when you kind of go into it and I think as women, having kind of this like selfish angle, I feel like is almost healthier in ways. When you talk to a lot of women about how they learned about sex, a lot of them will cite that partner, that older partner who taught them about their body, that older partner who gave them permission it feels like you guys are each other's partner who gave each other permission to have better sex and the best sex. Accurate? I think we gave each other permission to just like experience pleasure in all the ways at the highest level. Like you deserve it and you should. Like this is the, this is the life we can have. This is the things that you can accomplish. And this is like you, you can travel first class and you can have a goddess experience and you can have a business. So I think there's just like, it's limitless, but our our trust and like encouraging of each other spills out into every facet, including sex. I think for me too, uh, that experience for in our friendship, I think solidified my um, confidence in being able to ask for what I want outside of just her, like outside of her being there. Like, if I can do this with her, I can do this by myself. And that's kind of like the permission of our friendship in general. It's like, oh, if we can do this together, I know that I can do this on my own. And that's really, our friendship has given me so much more confidence as an individual. Um, because I think before we became friends or started our show, um, I, I was insecure. I had a lot of self-doubt. And I've realized how powerful I am because of what I've been able to do with her and knowing like, 
okay, I know I can do this by myself. I can. I, I love doing this with her, but I know that I can do it alone, and I know that she knows that she can do it alone too. What's the this and the it? Anything. I want this. Can you give it to me? Like asking for what you want. It's just simply like it's crazy how as women sometimes like you literally have to see someone do it in order to know that you can do it too. We get messages like that all the time. Like, thank you for being the example, showing us that it's possible. And it just like it dawned on me, like you actually not only have to hear about it, you have to see someone living it to say like, oh, you could do it. And that doesn't mean you're a slut or a hoe or she can do that. I can do it too. It's just like it widens our confidence and our span of what we are, like our ability, what we can do. And this is the like manifesting the relationship that I want, having the relationship with my friends that I want, being able to start a business if I wanted to on my own and knowing that it can be successful. You know, I think for me, like a lot of my um, anxiety before Mila was like, what is my purpose? Like, I don't know. What am I good at? Really? Like, I, I can't commit to anything. And, and now I know that if I ever said, if I ever did want to do something on my own, I know I could be successful at it. Although, yes, we had this goddess experience together, which I think was really beautiful and um, brought us closer in ways and just knowing that like I I want to champion my friend in all ways, whether that's in in her relationship with her partner, in our experience having sex with someone, you know, for fun and and for our own pleasure in in her, if she wants to start a business or do anything, I know that I that I can champion her and she'll do the same for me. And there's a level of extreme vulnerability and safety there. Um, and sex is that sex is really it brings people together in that way. It really is so intimate. And when you're able to share and be trusting in, the, in a space like that, it's transformative in friendships, I think. What's the greatest joy of getting to share your whole self with another woman when you get to call a best friend? The way in which we can manifest together. Being my whole self, I can like, we can really create some things because I know she loves me 400%, the dark, the bad, the ugly. And, um, Despite all of that, we still have like when someone knows you, when you feel safe enough to show up as your full self, you feel safe enough with yourself to do all the things. And I think like the magic of our friendship has really propelled our ability to manifest to the next level. Yes, to all of that. I think also just like I just having such deep trust and and it, and not in fear of it being broken because my trust has been broken with people that I love. And I feel like this friendship has kind of restored my trust in in humankind in, in ways, not just women, but in men. And um, I think it's really beautiful that our daughters get to experience that, too, and see the journey of our friendship and how it's grown. And like that, that these type of relationships are a priority that should they should be a priority and how important they are to nurture and um I think a lot of women they did they haven't had examples of that growing up. Oh shit, because they're best friends too, right? Yeah. Yep. Very, very big thank you to Erica and Mila, who I hope to see over this Christmas break. If you go to goodmomsbadchoices.com, you can listen to their podcasts, learn about their 2023 retreats and their live shows. Plus, you can show your support and appreciation for their work by buying some merch. And while you're at it, you should also follow them on Instagram at goodmomsbadchoices. Their clips are really just so hilarious and relatable and shareable. Okay. After listening to their goddess story, you might have some questions of your own. And if you're like me, you might just have one very big question. How do I get me one of those experiences? And up next, I have my friend Matilda Carroll. Through her work, Matilda liberates the mind, body, spirit, and sexuality in order to help people live in authentic expression and power. Matilda is an expert in shamanic medicine, breathwork, and tantra. Fun fact, Matilda and I met in Turks and Caicos as we were both workshop facilitators on Netflix's Too Hot to Handle retreat. And more fun fact, you can actually go watch us both on the latest season, which is streaming right now. Anyways, Matilda is going to help us grasp and ground all that we just took in from Erica and Mila right after Jared tells you about his secret sleeping weapon that has helped him fight back against the terror of having two kids under two. Have you ever heard of microdosing? If you haven't, just know all sorts of people are doing it daily to feel healthier and perform better. That's why our show today is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. Microdose Gummies delivers the perfect entry-level amount of THC just to make you feel great. 
And I've been trying them out myself and they keep me focused on my creativity and even help me sleep better, which isn't the easiest with two kids. So they taste good, they make you feel good. What do you have to lose? And plus, we like to give. So I got an offer for you, listen up. Microdose is available nationwide. To learn more about microdosing THC, go to microdose.com and use the promo code LOVERS to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. Links can be found in the show description, but again, that is microdose.com and the code is LOVERS. Hi, Matilda. Okay, how would you describe your work? My name is Matilda Carroll and I am a embodiment and intimacy mentor and I work in the field of Tantra, breathwork, shamanic medicine and I'm also a naturopath specializing in women's health and what I've discovered over the years is that regardless of what containers I'm working in, whether it's one-on-one -on -one clients or in retreats or workshops, Basically, what I create is a safe space for people just to heal, to open, to get vulnerable and to be fully seen. And despite all the qualifications I have, all I ever tell people is that I'm just holding space for them. And I'm really just a professional space holder. And I just sit there and I listen and the power of loving presence for someone is actually more profound than anything else that you could ever give them and the spaces that I ended up taking them into is that depth of that love allows them to purge their body whether it's energetically whether in tantra through pleasure whether it's through the breath whether it's shamanically through actual physical purging their old conditional beliefs that are trapped and stored in their cells get to be purged out of their system. And then through that, they're empowered to pretty much take on new beliefs that are actually theirs and authentically what they're wanting to take on instead of the ones that they've been conditionally given from birth and from well-meaning adults and from authority figures and from society. And ultimately in that process they get to come home to the wisdom of their bodies and to their erotic innocence. Now truth is, we often don't associate friends and sex, unless of course we're talking about friends with benefits. So how can friends actually help to enrich our sex lives, but in a more plutonic way? So Erica and Mila spoke really well into how friendship can really enrich your sex life and I think that there's such a beautiful representation of that when I listened to their podcast I just was like I want to be their friend because they're so contagious in their energy and in their friendship and what I feel is really going on there is just a really deep sense of intimacy between them and I think people think that intimacy and sex are synonymous with each other but really intimacy is in itself, it's really just about truth. And when we realize that we can tell someone our truth, when we can show ourselves to them in our full vulnerability, in our true self, and when we stand in front of them in our rawness and their response to us is that we're safe, that we're safe with them, that I think is the truest form of intimacy. So for the large part, majority of women don't have a Mila or Erica in their lives to be cheering them on and unfortunately majority of us have experienced some sort of heartache or betrayal or jealousy or just deep hurt in our lives and that's really caused us to close down our hearts to create armor around it and unfortunately I feel like despite the popularity of the sisterhood movement there's still a lot of comparison and judgment and um, bitchiness and rivalry that's still going throughout society and it's quite prevalent between women. Okay, Matilda, you just listened to that story. What is a goddess experience? Is this common? Is this normal? So the goddess experience is essentially in Tantra what we call yoni worshipping. And for males as well, we have a male equivalent, which is cock worshipping. But that's another podcast in itself. So really what the difference between a great massage and great head 
is really intention. So a man can give you that, but the difference in this goddess experience, in this yoni worshipping, is that there's an energy about it where the feminine gets to go into complete surrender and receivership and to know that they are completely worthy of receiving without having to give anything back in return. And for women, there's such a big stance around difficulty in receiving because we spend so much of our lives in giving whether you're a mother or you're a sister or you work in healthcare or you're a therapist or a medicine woman like we spend so much time giving and there's a part of our body that actually doesn't just know how to receive and relax into something and actually know that we deserve to receive that and in ancient times the goddesses were revered, they had temples, they had rituals, they had so much statues and Aphrodite rituals where they were deeply respected but over time that's really been deeply decimated and what's really coming back now is the remembrance of the goddess that we get to be worshipped by the masculine and vice versa as well. And there's such a beautiful, deep magic in receiving without agenda or knowing that you don't have to give anything back whatsoever in any shape or form. And the relaxation that the body gets to go into where you're like, oh, I don't have to give anything back. And in the honoring of that, where the masculine just deeply honors the feminine for everything that she is, it's like a full transmission of just like, thank you. Thank you for showing up as the feminine. Thank you for being everything that you have and giving everything that you have. And there's such a beautiful worshiping in that. And I love that Mila and Erica spent the week in a retreat in selfless act of service to the feminine and then afterwards they were like fuck it we need this like ritual to to just like appreciate everything that we've done and to allow ourselves to receive and that's such a beautiful energy to go into and it's so powerful to have these experiences whether it's with a partner or with a lover or someone that you bring in externally that can hold that space because In that space, I think a lot of the times women really actually believe that they're just wanted for sex and that they have to give back. I know I definitely have been in that situation where I feel like if I'm not providing sex, then I'm of no value. And that is at a core belief of a lot of women, I feel, and even some men as well. And I think that like if you can go into an experience and share with someone else, I completely love you and I completely worship you and honor you in this space that you are and you don't have to give anything to me and you are completely worthy. That transmission in itself is so fucking powerful. Can you elaborate on how Tantra plays a role in this dynamic? So a large part of Tantra is to be fully seen and experience the fullness of the human emotional spectrum and to be fully in your darkness, to be in your wildness, but also be in the fullness of your pleasure, your desires, your joy, your rage. And the girls touched on this about how they could express anything and talk about any of their sexual desires or their sexual experiences with each other without feeling shame or guilt around each other. And when shame is taken out of the picture like we get to be our full selves nothing is shamed or excluded and really what it says is all of you is welcome here and when you can fully own your desires and express your needs you feel so empowered to take control of your life and also because it's expressed and it isn't left in the shadow then leaky sexual energy isn't poured out into the space Manifesting during sex has come up a lot unprompted on this podcast. Can you speak to the power of doing this? The girls have completely hit the nail on the head with this manifestation technique while she's sitting on his face and orgasms in his mouth and pretty much has everything aligned in this sex magic ritual and from joy to pleasure to having your best friend there egging you on celebrating you in full force all the vibes what people fail to realize is that sexual energy is the most potent energy on this earth well according to me but if you think about it 
sexual energy is life force energy that flows through us. It's the energy of creation. What more miraculous thing can happen than an egg and a sperm coming together, colliding and creation happening, and then that being growing in your stomach for nine months. I feel like women are the true superheroes and there's not enough reverence and um, respect given to motherhood. So because we're not creating babies all the time, we can actually channel that energy and use it to create something else that we desire, whether it's more money or the house of our dreams or the relationship of our dreams or, yeah, even something small. But what we're aiming to do is actually create intent around how we use it and we're actually calling our power back because most of the time we're just kind of throwing it out there everywhere and this is what leaky sexual energy term the term is and whether it's lost in like excessive masturbation which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with but it's actually being conscious of like where is this sexual energy going and how am I using it and how can I be responsible for it and can I use it in a way that's actually going to be really supportive and helpful to my life. That's why in tantric sex there's such long sessions of love making because there's such a build up of sexual energy where we go through these peaks and troughs of energy and as the energy builds up we pull it pull it up through our chakras then up into our third eye and then the vision is just propelled out into the universe so Imagine when you have such strong intent of what you're wanting to visualize, you visualize it, you bring in the felt sense into the body and that was why what the girls was doing was so amazing because they had the felt sense of safety, of receivership, of like being able to receive pleasure and actually being able to be trusting of what the universe can give to them and trusting that they are worthy to receive. Yes! Uh, thank you for putting that so clearly for me. Okay, um, speaking of clear, can you paint a picture for me? What's an experience you've had recently that's allowed you to show up more authentically as yourself and in your power of pleasure? So during COVID, I lived in a house in Bali with 10 people, dubbed the Tantra House. Um, all of us were Tantra practitioners, or most of us were, and majority of us were in monogamous partnerships, so it wasn't all crazy sex parties and orgies and the thing that I really learned living there with such liberated sexual beings and obviously seven of the housemates were women and just having a space where you were constantly given compliments and praise and adoration and it was such a beautiful authentic space to allow myself to grow and blossom and to be fully seen by my other sisters in the house and also in a space where sexuality was so liberated where no one really held back from anything and we all had boundaries but we fully expressed ourselves in the fullness of everything from loud sexual experiences happening next door to just rage processes and I felt like in that we had full permission to fully show up sexually within our own relationships and I feel like the friendships that were cultivated within that space especially I feel like there's such a power in hearing another woman in her pleasure and we were all with each other in like kind of like large group situations where we were in our pleasure and when we're in our pleasure it almost activates something within us which gives us permission also to be in our pleasure so within the friendships within the sisters we we're all giving each other permission giving each other just a safe space for our pleasure to be explored and expressed Matilda you are so incredible last question for you what are we getting wrong about friendship and how can the teachings of Tantra help us to course correct? I think something that we get wrong about friendship is that we think that we can't share sensual or sexual energy within a friendship. It's a whole different level of love that gets to be experienced and a whole level of healing within the relationship within the masculine and feminine and I mean that on an essence level not gender specific and it really allows for healing between the masculine and the feminine and in the past, I've, I've experienced that where 
I've had difficulty having male friends because either that they wanted to fuck me or I believed that they wanted to fuck me and that caused issues sometimes and I couldn't be okay with that and then sometimes I couldn't be friends with males that were like had partners or things like that because like there was just too many issues there but I found as I've grown up and as I've matured in my own inner masculine I've called in a lot of really beautiful men who've come into my life and I guess a part of my own belief that was a part of my own belief that was the people that I was attracting and as I've grown up I've realized that men can be a safe space and as I've created safety in my body as I've created safety with my female friends then I've attracted more males into my life that are also creating this safety for me as well and I think this friendship space can be such a beautiful space where especially in Tantra I can be in a central embrace with my teacher's partner and there's nothing there's nothing that needs to be jealous or needs to have anyone have an issue about it but it gets to be this really beautiful sharing space of humans where there's not wounding between us and I believe that separation is the deepest disease on this earth and if we can come together in beautiful friendships, beautiful relationships and really coexist and cohabit with each other, I think the world would just be a better place. Thank you so, so much to Matilda. And for those of you who are picking up what Matilda is putting forth, she is a rich resource of wellness gold. Now, I'm actually going to put her link tree in the show notes because that's where you can find links to her courses, retreats, products, and so many other things that she loves and recommends. You can also follow her on Instagram at I am Matilda Carroll. Um, Thank you so much to all of the guests. Once again, you can find their links in the show notes. And speaking of shows, this is our second last show before the end of the year. Next week is a very special episode, which we will get more time together. And if there are specific thoughts that you're having that you want to share with me, the best place to share those thoughts about this episode and the podcast at large is... In the rate and review section on Apple or Spotify, that's an incredible place not only to communicate with me, but also to tell the world that this podcast is popping, it matters, and is starting important dialogues, or to tell the world that it sucks, that they should not waste a moment of their time listening to it, which if you feel that way and you're listening till the end of the episode, you're a special kind of hater, not in a bad way, in a special way. And I want to say thanks to you too, because it doesn't actually matter what you put in the rate and review section, it more so matters that you show the world that people care and care enough to say something, whether it be good or bad about the podcast. Thankfully, a lot of you have great things to say, and I want to share some of those right now. Jazz1991 said, this is a great podcast, and I love the conversations are so real. I love that the guests feel comfortable to be vulnerable and to share their stories. Thank you for that. Um, Mocha NYC says, Shan, the content never, ever disappoints by the end of every podcast. I've learned something new. Mocha, what did you learn in this podcast episode? You can also rate and review more than one time if you're interested. All right. By Marine says, I am a grateful lover and friend. I have been a lover of Shan's for years. I never write reviews on podcasts, but for this, I will. Yes, Marine. I've learned so much, had so many thought-provoking conversations after watching and listening to Shan's videos and podcasts. I love how well she articulates and how she makes me dig deeper when it comes to relationships, especially the one I share with my husband. Excited for next episode, as always. We got to end on that one, Maureen. Thank you so much to DV1N, to Lapita, to Carly B, to Jess Love, um, and Isabella, and Michi Dura. And Risa, and so many more. Carly, Kamiko, I can go on and on. Miss Carol, people who have made the time to say something and usually say something very kind about the podcast. I deeply appreciate you, as I appreciate all of you. But we're going to have a full ass love fest next week. For now, just soak in all that we just took in, and we'll talk in seven days. Unless you're not listening to this podcast when it launches, then I'll talk to you tomorrow or whenever. Bye. Lovers and friends, lovers and friends. I'ma take you on a trip, baby. I don't pretend. I said, lovers and friends. Uh, I'ma hold you down, down to the end. I said. 
Lovers and Friends is executive produced by Shared Entertainment's Shan Boudram. It is produced by Boudram and Crazia Cruz with production support from 2S Entertainment's Adam Krasner, Isabel Gallant, and Brianna Barone. The Lovers and Friends theme song is produced by Sean Ross and performed by Jared Brady, who also does the scoring and engineering on our episodes. Lovers and Friends is powered by Audio Boom and made possible by our incredible sponsors who you can show love to by reading our show notes.